Good afternoon and welcome to the final virtual variation on the Fridays in May. I'm Bob Hobby, Director of Music here at Trinity English Lutheran Church, and I'm joined with our Associate Director of Music, Evan Anderson. We thank Brian Eastman and Joseph Collins, who have been with us the entire month, who have been overseeing the, both the sound and the video aspects of our little concert program. If you've followed us through these five Fridays, you are aware that we have featured hymns, prefacing each musical setting with a little bit of information about the words and the melodies. With the exception of one piece played several weeks ago, all of the arrangements were created by Evan and me. Today, with the exception of one, we will feature settings written by other composers. So we begin with the familiar hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. The words, based on portions of Psalm 103 and Psalm 150, were written by a 17th century German clergyman and educator, Joachim Neander. Neander was aligned to the German Reformed tradition, and this hymn text is one of, of about 60 hymn text that he penned. Although the origins of the melody which we sing are unknown, its core has been traced back to the 17th century uh, Germany where it was found in a collection. It has with time experienced a few melodic modifications to what we now sing and know today. Evan will play an arrangement of the hymn by Paul Mons, who was one of our country's most influential 20th century church musicians. Paul served for many years as cantor at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Minneapolis, and later served on the faculty at Lutheran School of Theology in Chicago. He was also a friend of Trinity English, playing a hymn festival here in 1989 during German Fest. In fact, following the hymn festival, the choir took him over for a few polka dances uh, down the street. Paul later wrote a small choral piece for our congregation in 1998.
The origin for our next hymn tune, Pisgah, is unclear, and it typically falls into the category of an early American folk song. Its first published appearance was in the 1817 collection of shape note hymns called the Kentucky Harmony. It appeared in the collection with the words, Jesus, thou art the sinner's friend. But the melody has appeared with a number of other texts as well, most frequently with the words of hymn writer Isaac Watts, when I can read my title clear. The shape note tradition, which actually used different shape different shapes for the note heads was created to teach singers the pitches. It became very popular in singing schools of the South during the 19th century. But the tradition is making a comeback in popularity today. Using collections of, of hymns whose melodies use these shape notes, intergenerational groups of folks can still be found gathering for a casual afternoon of singing and conversation. Although this singing does not always reflect a refined quality, one can be guaranteed that it's enthusiastic. The delightful organ setting that you're about to hear based on this American tune was written by another prolific composer of sacred music, Dale Wood, a winner of a hymn writing competition at the early age of 13 Wood also served as an organist, a choral conductor, and an editor of several publishing boards until several years before his death in 2003.
The next piece, entitled Evensong, is a medley or merging together of two evening hymns into one setting. Those hymns are God who made the heaven and earth and all praise to thee, my God, this night. This gentle arrangement was created by American composer Charles Callahan and it's unique because it was written as an organ duet. Since there are two of us, and we were feeling a bit adventurous as we planned this program, we thought, why not? But as you might guess, there's one slight hurdle with two organists sitting next to each other on an organ bench right now. Yes, it's called social distancing. But don't worry though, with a few reassignments of the organ parts, Evan and I hope to inspire you by distancing ourselves about 200 feet apart. We are able to do this making use of the front organ console and a smaller organ console located in the rear gallery. With the flip of one switch on the front, the front console plays all of the pipes that you see here in the front of the space and the back console controls the pipes in the back. Since the distance can challenge us a little bit with our abilities to keep the music together, we decided to make use of technology recently introduced to us. Perhaps you've heard of Zoom? That's right. After I get back to the back console, Evan and I will have a Zoom meeting on our laptops, permitting us to see each other while we play. We have had fun preparing this little duet, and we hope you will enjoy it, remembering that if Evan and Bob can successfully distance from each other from 200 feet away, you can do it from six feet.
The very well-known hymn, Amazing Grace, was first published in 1779 with words written in 1772 by the English poet and Anglican clergyman, John Newton. Since its composition, it has become widely popular with Christians and cultures around the world. This hymn, as well as being sung in, uh, in daily worship services and weekly worship services, is often sung at funerals and is commonly associated with the bagpipe instrument. In Bob's arrangement of Amazing Grace, one might be able to hear him imitate the very distinctive sound of a bagpipe on this hymn.
Our next hymn tune that we will hear is the St. Anne hymn tune. The hymn text was originally written part of the Psalms of David imitated in the language of the New Testament, published by the well-known hymn text writer Isaac Watts in 1719. In this book, he re rephrased in Christian verse the entire psaltery with the exclusion of 12 psalms, which he thought were inappropriate for Christian practice. The melody, St. Anne, to which the lyrics of uh, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past are most frequently sung was produced by William Croft in 1708 while he was the organist of the Church of St. Anne, giving the name of the melody to the hymn. C. Hubert Perry included this arrangement of the St. Anne tune in his first set of chorale preludes published in 1912. Perry was a well-known Anglican church musician of the early 20th century. He composed many pieces for notable events in British history during that time, including an anthem used for the coronations of Edward VII and George V.
thank you for joining us on these hymnotic musical escapades that were the virtual variations on the Fridays in May. We hope that these have enriched and blessed you with a little bit of extra music during this time in your home. We'd like to thank once again the people who have helped make this possible, including Brian Eastman and Joe Collins, who helped us on audio and video, respectively. We wish you God's best and God's blessings upon you for the rest of the summer. Thank you. Thank you.